Thank you, Danny, and thanks to the organizer for giving me the opportunity to introduce theogenology. First thing first, what does theogenology actually mean? I learned that not everybody is familiar with this unusual word. The term is the fusion of two, of two Greek words. So one is therion and the other is genesis, which means animal and birth. Therefore, theogenology means animal reproduction. This uh, strange work, uh, word is commonly used by veterinarians, especially in North America, which is where our journal was founded. Theogenology, in fact, was born in California in 1974, so we are 47 now. Uh, here you see the original cover of what was a no frill journal dedicated to practitioners interested in the reproduction of domestic animals. However, you can notice that it had an international editorial board from the very beginning. Uh, setting the scene for what it is now, we changed the cover on the 30th birthday, and it now shows the first in vitro mature and in vitro fertilized bovine oocyte. The picture was taken by John Parrish in 1984 and was published in Therio in 1986. We also expanded our interest to white species, poultry and fish, but we limit our scope to research somehow linked to veterinary and animal science. Despite this, we have experienced a constant growth of submission that last year peaked at the record level of nearly four papers each day. Unfortunately, more than 60% of them do not make the, through the cut, but this still leaves us with more than 500 manuscripts published last year. We are a, a truly open community with submission coming and being accepted from all over the world. Down below, you see the list of 10 biggest contributing countries and this represents a fairly accurate picture of the world research activity in the field. So spanning from China to Japan, going through Spain, Poland, Italy, Republic of Korea, Iran, and so on. Uh, we, uh, our readership is also global and we are proud to provide uh, free access for more than 9,000 institutions in low income countries. We reward our reviewers with free access to the Science Direct and Scopus services. And probably more important, I think we support them with free online resources created by experienced editors and scientists for improving their professional skills. The other reason why I'm here tonight, I think is because both my journal and myself are longstanding convinced advocates on the use uh, of the important to include large animals into translational research. Uh, which is also, of, 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 which is obviously the underlying theme of today's meeting. We all agree that mouse is a beautiful animal and enable impressive research. At, at the same time, uh, it has uh, some relevant limitation when moving from basic to preclinical studies. Here is an extensive list of topics that can benefit from the use of domestic animal models. I now enlarge just a few of them that may be more relevant to you like epigenetics and environment, including the effect of photoperiod, global warming, seasonality and elevation, and the modification of, of our gene function. And of course, reproduction, reproduction including gametogenesis, gonadal function, infertility, and aging. And you will soon have a, an excellent example shortly from our third speaker. Apart from some unexpected links between Nobel laureates and the use of farm animal models, my personal view on why this species should be considered when planning biomedical research comes down to the concept of better physiological relevance. Uh, this can be further specified talking about anatomy and size, metabolism, metabolic rate, lifespan and pregnancy length, heterogeneous genetic background, and certainly many of you can add other items to the list. Uh, along the years, my colleague and I generated some data in this area, both within and outside reproduction. The common pattern has been that the molecules involved in the specific physiological event under study were in most cases the same as in the mouse, but they had different role or slightly different uh, angle. This invariably provided a new perspective and a better understanding of the whole process that we happily share with the rest of the scientific community. 
But now enough with this general consideration and let's enjoy the interesting data that will be presented by our excellent speakers that obviously all work on domestic animals. Thank you. <laughs>